Class, in this video, we're going to demonstrate how to use JUnit to make a test case. I'm going to use a project called Chapter 44 Extra, and it's going to use some classes uh, that actually that we used back for Chapter 13 when we were working with abstract classes. And um, specifically, I want to make a test case for the class admin here, which I have open. Here's class admin right here. But let's write a test case for it. In order to do that, on the menu, I'm going to select not not new class, but the drop list here. And one of the choices is JUnit test case. So we'll select that. I want to make it a JUnit 4 test case. And the class I want to test is admin. That's good. I could have browsed to that if necessary. When I hit next, I'll get a list of the methods that are in that class. And basically, that's what you're doing in the test cases. You want to test the methods to see if they're giving you the proper return values. So we're going to test the, the getter for the department. That returns a string. I'm going to uh, test the get office, which also returns a string. And then the get salary, which returns a double. And that'll do. So we'll just hit finish. Now, a very important pop-up appears. And we have to add JUnit 4 to the build path. So we will actually do that. We'll click OK. And it did get added. Here it is over here in the Package Explorer. You see we have our, uh, it's been added to the build path, JUnit 4. And here's the actual test program called admin test. We've got a couple of methods here that we can basically ignore. But the first thing that we have to do is we have to create an instance of admin. So we'll create an admin object, an admin instance. And in order to do that, we're going to be using class admin and running its constructor. I'm going to call it CEO. And of course, we'll run the constructor new admin. Now, I don't remember everything that's supposed to be in there. At least I don't remember it in the right order. So I'm going to drag the admin class down here so that I can see the constructor. And now I can see that I have to enter the name as a string, then the local date, and so on. So we'll carry on with that. I'm going to go with m.scott as the name. And for the local date, uh, date I have to actually use the local date, the local date class and its of method and I have to specify the year let's say that he started in 2002 in the third month on the 22nd day that takes care of the date now I need the uh, ID as an int uh, let's say his uh, ID number is 1001 uh, his department is a string let's just call that MGT for management and his office, he doesn't have a, a room number, but on his door it does say manager. And his salary, let's go with 120000 So there's a, a, an instance, an object of type admin that we can use for our test case. So we can get rid of this or tear it down a little bit here. Now, let's test the methods. Let's test the get, get department method. So what we want to do is we have to create a couple of strings. We know that should be turn a string. Um, I'm going to recommend that you use the uh, approach that's shown here in our chapter 44. Uh, this, this is a really good link here. This link has some good stuff in it. So I, I encourage you to, to take a look at that. And we're going to use along the same sort of approach here. I'm going to go with string expected. equals. Now what we expect it to be for the department, we expect it to be MGT because that's what we entered up there for the department. What we have to do is create another string by actually using the method of our CEO object. And we'll, of course we'll use get department. So now we have those two strings. Now we have to compare those to see if they are the same, and that, that would be a test for this particular method. I certainly want to uh, get rid of, I, I could delete that uh, fail uh, line, but I'll uh, just leave it in there, comment it out. Now, now we have to use one of the methods of the uh, assert class. 
I'm going to go with a search equals. And what we what we want to test is to see if expected equals actual. Expected comma actual. Those are the two that we want to compare. Now, if they do uh, test as equal, then we know that our, our get department method is working properly. Let's carry on and try the, uh, we'll test the office. Once again, we'll create two strings. String expected. And what we are expecting is manager. That's what we put up for the field value when we created our, our uh, instance up here. And then we want another string. And we'll use the method. We'll call it actual for that one. Our object was CEO. And we want get office. Now, let's try a different uh, Let's try a different one here now. Instead of using assert equals, we could. But why don't we try a different method of class assert. So I'm going to go with assert true. Assert true. Now this has to return a Boolean, as you might expect. So I'm going to go with expected dot equals actual. That's, that's what we have to do to compare strings, right? Strings To compare strings, we are required to use the equals method. Remember, you can't use a double equal sign to uh, check the value of a string, to test the value of a string. Get rid of the fail message. And we've got one more method that we want to test. Now, this one is the salary. That one returns a double. So I'm going to go with two doubles this time. We'll go with double expected. And we'll, we'll take a look at our value of, the, I believe it was 120,000. We had 120,000 for the salary in our object that we created. And now we'll get the actual by using the method get salary. There it is. And let's use assert equals again on this one. So we'll go with assert equals and we want to compare expected with actual whoa look what happened it's deprecated that when we get a line through a method like that it means it's deprecated as you can see by the pop-up here that's deprecated so we have to do something else, and this is a special way you have to use it, assert equals for floating point numbers, like doubles. Uh, because of the inaccuracies with which doubles are represented, we have to specify uh, a, a, a range of error. So I'm going to put in here 001. We'll compare, care, compare them to see if they're equal based on that much uh, possible difference in value. That's, that's a requirement if you're using assert equals with the floating point type. Well, we're basically done. I think we've done. We've tested all the methods. So let's run it. Just run it as usual up here. But when we run it, we get a, a new pop-up showing up here. We get a JUnit uh, window showing up inside the Package Explorer. And uh, in this case, we've got errors. We've got a, a, some kind of a problem somewhere. Let's see why. Uh, we didn't we didn't comment this one out here. Notice that the first two tested okay. You see a little green check box and beside those first two methods, but this one failed because I forgot to comment this out. Well, I can run the test again uh, by up here. If I just click on this icon right here, it's rerun the test. We'll try it. All green. That's good. That means it, the test works. All, all methods were tested properly. And that's basically it for using JUnit. Do take a look at, at, um, at this. You could also take a look at Vogelas. He, he has very good tutorials all the time. But, but this is a really good sum, summary uh, uh, example. Hope that helps.